um, everything is just very practical. Um, if I have an idea, we draw it, then we try to discuss it with everybody involved in the process, and hopefully we can find uh, the right artists that can actually render the ideas. There's nothing magical. It's just hard, boring work. So I think for people who want to be film directors, first they better learn all of the lower jobs, and then maybe, if they're lucky, they can do the top job. I don't think my films are fantastic. That's the, the key element. I think they're normal. So to me, it's just doing normal work. My problem is, I think, the world seems to be made smaller and smaller by um, the media, by uh, politicians, by simplistic thoughts. And, and all my films are really trying to make the world a larger place and hopefully allow people to uh, encourage them to be intelligent and make decisions and take charge of their destiny. Whether they succeed is their problem, not mine. But I like to encourage. I think if um, the films encourage people to look at the world in different ways, to see more ways of describing and experiencing the world, maybe they will then have more choice of what the world might be and what their world might be. Um, and then you've got to learn to believe in yourself and, uh, and continue to do battle for what you think is right. And you'll probably lose, but uh, sometimes some people win, and, makes, and it makes the world a better place usually. I think filmmaking now, probably more time is spent trying to raise the money than actually doing the work of making a film. And what is always surprising that despite many successful films, uh, the system seems to be frightened of really interesting ideas. And so you probably only see interesting films at film festivals because you won't see them in your local cinema because they're too busy and too desperate to make money, and Hollywood films tend to make more money than independent and European films. So I, I really don't encourage young people to go into the cinema to try to direct their own movies, because it's very difficult unless you are obsessed or possessed, um, you probably won't survive. If I was good at another job, I probably would not be trying to make movies. I think for the last uh, 20 years we've been having a great success with very rational bankers. And where did that rationality result? What was the result of all that? Those are very serious, rational people. And we are in a crisis because of serious, rational people. It's time for more silliness, more ridiculousness, more outrageousness. Start thinking again. People became so narrow in their view of the world and what was possible that they stopped having fun and we stopped uh, and we lost all our money, <laughs> basically as well. <laughs> it's possible to be very irrational and yet very intelligent. It is possible. The internet is very dangerous. Um, the internet is very seductive. Uh, the internet hypnotizes us into believing we are communicating. I'm not convinced. We have this incredible system where information travels around the world immediately. And what do we do? We show pictures of the food we're eating. We're asking the, our next door neighbor what they think of us. They're, we're writing stupid things. Um, personally, I think I'm more interesting, interested in people not communicating anymore. Uh, people need to learn to be alone again find out who they are, not who their friends think they are. And this is one of the themes in my next film, The Zero Theorem, soon to be in cinemas in Italy. I don't understand that uh, kind of question because basically <laughs> we're telling jokes and we put the camera where we can see the actors so they can be funny. Very simple. <laughs> one thing that was very important about Sacre Graal was that Terry Jones and I were both big, big fans of Pasolini, because I felt in Pasolini's film you could really taste and feel and smell the world that he created. And we thought it would be a much funnier film if we could create a very serious and believable medieval world with mud and shit and, 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 and people eating horrible things. Because it seemed to me the more real we could make the world, the more funny we could make it. And 
unfortunately, the um, National Trust of England didn't agree with us because we chose many beautiful castles that we were going to use. And at the very last moment, just as we were starting to shoot, they refused us permission to shoot in their castles. Comedy was obviously much more dangerous than all the tortures and tor terrible things that had gone on in those castles. So we just made a big one out of uh, one of them, out of card, uh, pl uh, plywood, and painted it and put it on the hill. And then when it looked fake, we had invented a funny line when I got to say, it's only a model. So even though everything was written in advance, we had to always adjust and write new material to deal with the reality of uh, what we were doing. And we had a very sh short shooting schedule, so there was no time to think about the shots, just shoot. The basic problem is I'm not a very good filmmaker. I begin with very precise ideas, very clear script, and then when we start shooting, I keep making mistakes. And then we have to try to fix it in the editing room, and it becomes this world that you're describing. Tideland came from a book. It, it wasn't an original idea. It was a book um, written by an American author. And he sent the book to me, hoping I would write a little um, note for the publishers to put on the back of the book. And I uh, did write that. I think I, think I said, fucking great, is what I said. Uh, and then decided to make a movie from it. <laughs> what was interesting about the book, it was like a modern version of Alice in Wonderland, but much darker and stranger and more, um, more in a strange way, more magical because it was, uh, came from the heart and not from the mind, I think.